So question seven in the higher level applied maths paper it starts off as a graph theory question uh, involving some waterfalls. So we have to find the minimum tree for the network. So we can either use prims or cross skulls. Uh, I prefer to use prims. So we're going to start, or when given the option, uh, I like to use prims. So we're going to start off at A. I have to consider all the edges coming out of A, but don't create a cycle. So we're going to start with AD. Let's write that AD is 11. Now coming out of A or D, the smallest one is CD at 7. And that also means we block off AC because that creates a cycle. Now the smallest out of here, we have an 18, a 10, a 9. 9 looks the smallest. So CE is going to be the next one. So CE is 9. Smallest out of all of them, we have a 10, 11, 11. It's going to be 10. So CF going to be 10. This also blocks off uh, DF because that creates a cycle in this little triangle. Now the next one clearly seems to be HF or FH for alphabetical order. So FH is 4. And uh, this also blocks off EH because that creates a cycle. Now smallest next I believe it looks to be HJ. So HJ is 6. Uh, next smallest appears to be IJ at 8. I don't see anything better. So IJ is 8. This also blocks FI because that creates a cycle. Next smallest looks to be 10. 17, 16, 19, 11, 14, 12, 21, 10. So IK, 10. Uh, this also blocks JK because that creates a cycle. Now next smallest is KL at 9. So KL equals 9. Doesn't block, it doesn't make possibility for cancelling for cycles. Uh, next smallest appears to be G at 11. So EG is 11. This helps a lot because GL creates a big cycle. Uh, GH also creates a cycle going G, H, F, C, E, G. Now the only one I have connected is B. So the shortest directly to B uh, actually, ooh, GJ creates a cycle. You know, the shortest one to B is, would be here. So BE is 16. Which would mean that this creates a cycle and this creates a cycle. Okay. So we should have one, we should have 11 total arcs. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Cool. The park enters at A at L, use a minimum spanning tree, count at a time, needed to enter the park A, visit every waterfall, leave the park at L. Right. So, now this is actually a slightly complex question because um, if we want to visit every waterfall and go on a particular path, we'd have to go A, D, C, E, then we can either go G back to E and then E back to B. And then to E, and then continue on our way. So, the actual minimum weight of our spanning tree is 11 plus 7 plus 9 plus 10 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 9 plus 11 plus 16, which is 101. However, We'd actually have to visit 
We'd have to go to E, B, and then back. And then if one of us is a G, we have to go to G and back. So we have 32 plus 22, which is 54. So in actuality, we have the 101. We have the 101 for the whole thing, and then we have an extra 11 and an extra 16 for going back from G back to E. Then from E to B, that we've already considered, but we're also going back from B to E. So we have an extra 27 to consider. So 27 from the overcount. Or actually, well, from the undercount, rather. So from the undercount is 128 and units in minutes. So it is a bit of an oddball question. Now, I, I assume that they mean minimum weight or just the weight of the spanning tree. But if it means visiting every uh, every waterfall on the path, then you're going to have to go backwards to some other waterfalls. Just kind of double checking my work with the question when I did this before. Must have added something up wrong because I, I got 94. Eh, whatever. Add that again. So 11 plus 7 plus 9 plus 10 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 9 plus 11 plus 16. Okay, I'm getting 101. Hmm. Alright, whatever. So, we now have another differential equations problem. A learning curve is a graphical representation of how a person's ability to perform a certain task increases with time. This is reminding me of, I think, 2022's paper with the forgetfulness curve. Uh, solve differential equations when t is 0 and it's 250. Okay. So, dn by dt is k times 2000 minus n. So, dn over 2000 minus n equals k dt and then integrate so initially it's 250 and we're looking for n and k or about t rather so here if we differentiate the bottom we get a factor of minus one out of the front so there's going to be minus that's actually it's going to be in the thing so minus log of 2000 minus n evaluate between 250 and n equals kt evaluate between 0 and t so this is a oh, more things where I don't have enough room so this would be uh, first see minus log of 2000 minus n plus log of 1750 kt so combining these we get log 1750 over 2000 minus n equals kt now we're looking for in terms of n i think so more we're gonna have to go down this so if we e both sides we get 1750 over 2000 minus n is e to the kt. So multiply by 2000 minus n divided by that, we get 1750e to the minus kt. <coughs> Excuse me. It's 2000 minus n. <coughs> oh my god. So of course to find n, we can um, subtract 2000 and then flip the sign. So we get n is 2000 minus 1750e to the minus kt. After 6 hours, it students spell 1500, calculate k. So t equals 6, n is equal to 1500. So 1500 is 2000 minus 1750e to the minus 6k. Now here we're going to get 500 over 1750 because when we take that away we get minus 500 dividing by the minus 1750. Uh, it's going to flip the signs. So 
If we then take the natural log and divide by six, so K is the natural log of 500 over 1750 over six, which gives K as 0 0.2. Now sketch a graph of N against T. Right. So, okay, let's have a look back at our form. So as T grows larger and larger and larger and larger, this tends to zero. So we're gonna have a horizontal asymptote at 2000. Uh, initially, it was 250, which is about there. And then it's gonna kind of curve up rather rapidly. So it's gonna appear something like this, and eventually it's gonna level off close to, but not exactly at 2000, because this is, I'll just label as a horizontal asymptote at n equals 2000. And so that's the answer. Those are the answers to high level applied maths question seven.